people for the Slow Flowers vodcast and podcast um, is crazy, are crazy. So I'm here with Carly Donnelly of the Rusted Vase Co. Hi, Carly. Hi. How are you? We're in an office room. <laughs> we're in the business center of the Four Seasons in downtown Seattle where we, we were snuck in and we're allowed to take our masks off, uh, which is good because we want to be safe and we're both vaccinated, so yep. we're safe. But Carly is participating as a designer in the um, Floridaville Noel, the first time it's been in downtown Seattle, and there's a whole exhibition at Pacific Place, which I'm going to try to get video of, but uh, we ran into each other at the market last we week, did. <laughs> and you said uh, that you were designing a sort of a satellite exhibition here at the Four Seasons, which is right across the street from Pike Place Market. Yes. I can't think of a better place to be. No, it's great. Lots yeah. of foot traffic and visibility. So, first of all, uh, you have not been a guest on the podcast for many years. Uh, we will we will share that <laughs> episode of Carly's, um, I guess we did like a, a debut when you opened your, your retail space, yeah. right? Yeah, it was probably two years three years ago it was it was at least three years <laughs> yeah. ago it was in the university district yes. had a huge shop we talked a lot about just going from a studio floors to quasi retail but give right. us a snapshot now of what has happened with the rest of base coke yeah so I mean, really at this point in time I, I had opened the shop kind of thinking I wanted to do retail and then when I got so busy, busy with weddings, it just didn't make sense to yeah. have a space that I had to staff. And then we were going away for weddings or being out of town. Um, and I loved that space. I used it for a few years and had wedding planners rent the front offices for me for consultations. And, and I was thinking too, like it was on what you would call a walkable street. Yes. But, and there was some good street parking, but right. then you're chained it to the retail hours and you couldn't right. do that. Right, yes. And I quickly realized I didn't want to do retail and that I mostly just loved weddings and events. So now I just do weddings and events. Um, and I have a little studio space in East Lake. Um, it's right on a marina and it's on the water. And Oh, <laughs> I love it. So Seattle. It's like your sleepless in Seattle yeah. location. <laughs> yeah. um, do clients come there or for consultations? Yeah, I mean, with COVID, I haven't had very many in-person meetings. Yeah. I feel like we all kind of switched to Zoom or Google Meets or whatever. Um, I've started to have more people come in and do consults. Uh, I, the building was actually sinking, funny story. So they just lifted the building a whole foot and redid my floors and wow. so I kind of got a revamp in the space so now I'm going to have people come in because it's a little bit nicer. Wow, what a responsible landlord that yeah, is. Right? Wow. <laughs> um, I'm only saying that because she was talking about her previous space where uh -huh. it wasn't such a cool landlord but I mean that's that's just the world of real estate. You got right. lucky this time. Yes, we did. So are you able to do production in that space? Yeah, so um, I have three workbenches and storage. It's small, but mm -hmm. it works. And yeah. um, a few times this summer, I rented the cooler from the Seattle Wholesale Growers Market just when I had really large weekends. But I'm actually building a cool bot cooler um, in the next couple months. So now I won't need to. I am so happy you said that. CoolBot yes. has just joined Slow Flowers Podcast oh. as a sponsor. Oh, amazing. So shout out to CoolBot. That yeah. was not planted. That <laughs> no, was just natural. Are you doing the turnkey or are you doing the, actually, we have a carpenter in your family, so you right. probably can follow the instructions. Yes. Yeah. And when I had my first space, we had built a CoolBot um, cooler in there, so I kind of have an idea of what to do. But yeah, we'll get the panels and my dad will help, and my nice husband, and make sure it won't fall over <laughs> or be crooked. And yeah, it'll be great, and it'll be through a window wow. is where the AC unit will okay. be, which will be nice. Okay, so you're having to give up a little bit of floor space yes. to do it. But um, but that way I have way more space for flowers, and um, yeah. I had a like fridge before, but those kick off so much heat that then it's like the AC unit was fighting the fridge. Oh, wow. So I ended up just getting two AC units last summer uh -huh. and keeping it really cool. So just now, just air conditioning the whole environment. Right, yeah. yeah, and now I don't have to worry about that. Oh, that's, that's cool, great. that's really yeah. cool. So let's talk about uh, Floridaville. Have you, you've done styled shoots before, right? Sure. Would you yeah. kind of treat this like that? Or what, what so. possessed you to say yes? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what possessed me to say yes. You just say no, yes. I know, you I you are always game for anything. Um, it's been a really fun like challenge to you know think about the mechanics of that of the mannequin and how to like make a dress and like what the bodice is going to look like. Um, and I'm kind of a mechanics nerd, so it was fun for me to do that. Um, and it's great to like get to play sometimes and yeah. just do something different. And obviously, they give uh, all the floors to stipend. 
um, so at least like supplies and whatnot are covered, um, which is yeah. great because and a lot of the time with style shoots, people want you to do it for free, yeah. which isn't really that beneficial for us. <laughs> yeah. No, I really respect the Florida Bill uh, management because, yeah. um, and I, we've had Tina and Karen on the podcast mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago, they do value um, uh, supporting florists and not asking for free. Yeah, so I, I like that. Me too. Um, this design, we're going to show, we're going to edit it into this podcast so people can see it. I just took a little video and you're going to give me some photos. Yes. It is, uh, I would call it like winter wonderland. Mm -hmm. Like it's a total sparkly, snowy palette. But, yeah. but what, do you, what, do you, what do you call it? <laughs> yeah, at first when I like kind of tried to come up with a theme, I toned it back a little bit. Um, just being at the Four Seasons, I wanted to kind of make it a little bit more, not glam, but you yeah. know, less rustic sort yeah. of. Um, my original idea was Alice in Winterland. So I was going to do like logs with mushrooms and like really woodsy. Oh wow, um, save that for something else because that sounds cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think she's just kind of like a winter forest queen. It's like lots of like cool yeah. green tones and moss and a little bit of color, but not a lot. Actually, you would uh, you could see that on Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, some, some princes, princes, some snowy princes. Yeah. So your palette was really interesting because there are some rules about mm -hmm. um, percentage of foliage or percentage yeah. of dried or something, right? Yeah, they. I mean, they really encourage us to use as much fresh as possible, which we all know for 10 days is to, for something that lasts for 10 days is really tricky. Yeah. Um, so I kind of blended in fresh and dried and things like baby's breath and status that I knew would just kind of dry over time. Um, but, but not lose their, right. their shape or their color. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And the colors that I brought in it kind of just made me think of like that transition from winter to spring when things yeah. are just like popping up in the ground, like crocus and things like that, you know, those wintery flowers. So. That's kind of where I got it. That's a good point. So the bodice is, is it lamb's ear? Silver tree. Oh, silver tree mm -hmm. foliage. Okay, that which is even better than lamb's ear because it's, it's probably more gluable or... Yeah, I just used double-sided sticky tape over the whole bodice. Wow. And then just kind of layered it. Um, and then did some like dried, I have like dried larkspur and some dried hydrangea that I kind of attached as like beading of the oh, dress. Oh, but, neat. Um, yeah, you'll see. Wow, and then, because uh, you just get a, basically a smooth white mannequin with no features, mm -hmm. right? Right, yeah, yeah. and the, the rules are that you, they want you to cover it so it doesn't get damaged, so what they suggest is saran wrap. So you kind of saran wrap the frame, or like, you know, the whole body first, and then attach your mechanics oh. to it. Oh, okay. So it doesn't get chipped and Oh, yeah. There. I was thinking, how do you pull double-sided sticky tape leaves off of that mannequin, but you use the, 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 the wrap underneath. Yep, so that first, and then I put sticky tape over the whole thing, so when I'm done, I'll just probably cut the saran wrap off. <laughs> oh, to cut it in the back so you can <laughs> save the bodice. Yeah. <laughs> and then this very fitted bodice, which mm -hmm. is it's a really cool textile you created, that kind of almost like sequin vibe, yeah. but, but flat sequin. For sure. Um, goes into this wild skirt mm -hmm. and um, there's a lot of ingredients in that and I'm, yes. I don't want to say it from memory so tell me what you have in there. Yeah so I have um, baby's breath status, a little bit of misty, um, there's markia and some other palms, I'm trying to think, oh and then some bleached uh, ruscus, I think that's the gist and then, of it. And then the, the, the palms are both green and bleached? Um, they're dry, oh, so they're, they're dry. Just, like, have dried okay. over over time. Oh, um, and then the Livingstonia. When is that? So there's there's the Bismarckia, like big palms, and then Livingstonia are the ones that a lot of time come rounded. People like cut the oh. edges off of them. Oh boy, I don't know my my uh, species of, of yeah. palms. Wow, <laughs> impressive. But um, those, so there's two different kinds, and yeah, some of them I've had for a while, so that's where they're like that gray green, so they've already kind of dried and curled up. And then some are more fresh, so they're a little bit more of that like eucalyptus color. It's actually more interesting to have the two colors. Yeah, I thought because so. you're creating this depth where people can then go, oh, it's 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 a palm, and then there's some lighter color behind it. I thought yeah. it was brilliant. Thanks. So, how long did you spend to create the the garment? It was a few days of getting like kind of just like wrapping my head around what exactly I was going to do, and then getting the mechanics set mm -hmm. up. Um, at the studio, I had my team come in and help with like 
you know, doing the, the layering of the silver tree yeah. and that type of thing. And then on site, when we were here, we got here really early in the morning and it took us a few hours. Um, but yeah, we pre-did the bodice and carefully transported that. We pulled the mannequin apart. <laughs> yeah, because how big is your van? Otherwise, you have a stand-up mannequin. <laughs> know, exactly. And um, because of Christmas and everything going on, there are no vans available oh right now. I think because of the sure. Amazon and whomever else is renting them. So, yeah, we used my SUV and my husband's truck. <laughs> I love it. It takes a village. It does. Um, well, I wanted to talk about some of the unique man uh, mechanics you did because you, um, I know in the past I've seen that some people do use foam to make mm -hmm. these floral sure, garments, yeah. but you were trying not to, right? Right, which is, you know, not using foam when you can lean heavily on foam is always the challenge because it does work, but I well, try not to use it. Also, with, with a 10 day run, right. it's sort of hard not to skip that yeah absolutely um, what else do you do yeah for sure so um you'll see photos of it but the like kind of skirt is basically upside down tomato cages to create the you know they go this way and then so you, you mean you just you just put them on the ground underneath mm -hmm. around the base of the mannequin yeah so oh. the circle is on the bottom mm -hmm. which would traditionally be on top right. of your tomatoes and then we wrapped that in a few layers of chicken wire and then zip tied like dollar store plastic cups onto the frame. So onto the upright. Yep, onto like the cross beam. Yep. Yeah, and zip tied it a few times, and then those act as the water source. Um, and I think I mean it's working well. Um, it's you know it's a weird shape to like make sure all of the stems and everything are in the water sources. Yeah, you know. So but you have this. Um, I like the asymmetry to it. It's not like a a princess ball gown where it's right. all exactly you know, a circle around her body. For sure. You've kind of given it an emphasis on one side. Yeah, and that's what I was really, I didn't want it to look ball gowny, so I think like the palms really helped with that. Yeah. Um, and you know, they're great for covering mechanics because they're really big. <laughs> well, um, you're going to share a few photos of, of how this looks, but when you have to, oh, okay, what is in the, what is in the water source? Is it mainly the roses? Yeah, um, roses, tulips, there's some delphinium, um, else some carnations a little bit of a, a few ranunculus um this time of year is hard because yeah. nothing was local which you know i try to always like use local seasonal flowers um but yeah there's some like golden mustard roses and large spur delphinium i think i said that and so that vibe of you saying kind of just barely emerging into spring from winter mm -hmm. that's why it's so so soft in the pastel palette mm -hmm. of the pale lavenders, pale pale blues, right. pale pale mix. Yeah. Um, and the mustard uh, roses, I didn't, I didn't remember seeing those. So that adds a little, yeah, a little shimmer. And I think trying to stick with like the Noel theme too. Um, I knew immediately I wasn't going to do red and green. I just couldn't wrap my head around how I would make that fit my kind of style. Yeah. Um, and I think you know, I love love Christmas. That's part of the reason I said yes. But I went more like wintery versus yeah. like Christmassy. Yeah. Yeah. And then your mannequin is holding a bouquet. She which, is, yeah. Which is another challenge, right? <laughs> totally. um, yeah, so it, we did one of like the cups right below her hand to make it look like she was holding a bouquet. Oh. Oh. Um, so there's the water source. Um, yeah, I have a funny story, uh, kind of not funny. Um, when we broke up into teams <laughs> to do the mannequin, I think some flowers were missed getting into that water source the first day. Because they're tricky once you cover all the mechanics of baby's breath. And the status. How do you peek yeah, in there to right. see? Yeah, right. So a few stems didn't make it into the water on the first day. So that's part of the reason we have to come and refresh it, you know, yeah. every couple of days yeah. to make sure we're pulling out things that have died. Um, and being in a busy breezeway is tricky. It's the entrance to the hotel with about right. two square feet to work in. So, yeah. you know, what do you do? Totally. And like the door has been, you know, kind of <laughs> hitting it and the wind and people are touching it and bags and I'm just waiting for it to knock on wood, fall over, and, but I hope it doesn't happen. Yeah. We've but got a sandbag stand. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And you've made <laughs> friends with all the doormen, so they love you. Yeah. I know. I'm like, I owe them cookies or something from here every day, like, hi. So from, well, from a marketing point of view, there's a ballot where people can, um, you know, by voting for their favorite mm -hmm. uh, entry. It's not just mannequins. I know there's other installations. Yeah. Um, they're getting to know a little bit about you and your name, but on the other hand, right. A lot of tourists are staying here so sure. you know 
what's your marketing play? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think, you know, there's like, it's more, I don't really think of this as much of like a marketing, okay. like for me anyway, yeah. um, I think it's more just like for fun. And I do know I've made some good connections, like especially here at Four Seasons. Um, I feel like that's probably going to be your best connection, Absolutely, right? yeah. yeah. And I know, I mean, it's great visibility amongst the community. And I, I feel like it is one of those opportunities like a style shoot where you just get to show your level of like creative creativity mm -hmm. outside of like a paid job yeah. where you know you're kind of limited sometimes. It's so. right. You had you had some constraints, but they were all ones that you pushed as far as you could go. Right. And um, <laughs> yeah. you know made made your own put your own spin on it. Yeah. Um, you made the comment about you know the red and green and not really mm -hmm. wanting to go that direction because you wanted to show the rusted vase mm -hmm. aesthetic. Right. So. With the word rusted, mm -hmm. that is kind of a not exactly a word you'd see in a Four Seasons, right? Totally. So how do you how do you blend all that and it just describe what you, your aesthetic is? Yeah, um, it's funny. I was actually talking to one of the doormen about that earlier. That like typically, I'm not really like a hotel ballroom style. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more wild, and I use lots of texture. Um, nothing's really that controlled, and um, yeah, I think. I don't know if I should announce this or not, but I am changing my business name next year. I'm launching a new name. Um, when? In January? In, yeah, end of January, early February. Well, you can announce it I'm here. <laughs> we'll, make a, we'll make a big splash. Uh, you know, um, but yeah, I think bringing up the rusted thing, you know, um, I chose that name because of a connection I had with my grandma when I first started playing around with flowers. She was into antiques, and I used this like rusty kind of old vase in her antique collection, I still have it. A sweet. Mm -hmm. And then um, as my styles developed a little bit more and I see my brand, I don't always associate with like rustic, like barns and that type of thing. It's more like outdoorsy and wild mm -hmm. and whimsy mm -hmm. um, and a little bit more modern. It's not a vintage look. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. So I've been playing with the idea of changing my name for like years now because I'm like, I don't think this matches my identity and I actually did a poll on Instagram last year and it was like 94% of people said it didn't match my like style. It's but good had, that you asked for feedback. Yeah and a lot of people I think then felt bad. They're like no but I like it. Oh and I got so many messages but it's so sweet and I love the story. But um, yeah so I tried to find a name that one wasn't used. Right. Two had any meaning to me whatsoever. Um, I do a lot of color. That's kind of like my signature thing, I think. So. Yeah, you're not a blush uh, wedding designer. Right. Yeah. And so finding something that also like had a connection to the word to color in any way, shape, or form, like tinge or hue or something mm. that wasn't taken. Yeah. So I've settled on goldenrod. Um, so it'll be golden goldenrod floral. Um, I love that. Thank you. Yeah. And it's like a color, obviously. Yes. And, and a flower. flower. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think it just came to me one day and I immediately did like a Google search like are there any companies and I couldn't find any. Wow. Um, and I think I'm doing like some so a soft launch with some like cute like apparel and things and that to me felt like a brand that I could put on t-shirts and things yes. like that. Oh, so, so you're going to do some um, merchandise mm -hmm. around this. Oh wow, that's yeah. awesome. So it's like kind of, it's hard to like let go of the, the rusted vase part of me because it's like how yeah. I started my business but I'm happy with Golden Run I think when I launch it will all make sense to everybody. The rusted vase is at least five years old right or is it longer? Yeah 2016. Okay. Or 15. Seven years old. Wow. Yeah I think the first wedding I did I started like playing with flowers or working for other people in 2015. I think my first solo wedding was 2016. Okay, I'm gonna issue a ch I'm gonna issue a challenge to Carly, and that is because it's all about what I need, and that is I would love you to do a goldenrod American Flowers Week garment. Oh yes, done. I mean, Absolutely. I can just see that, and no yeah. one's used that botanical before. Yeah. So I would think love about to. it, and I yeah. love yellow. So <laughs> yeah, I think it it would be awesome, and I think that the mm -hmm. thing about that stem, I mean, I have some in my garden. It is kind of late summer, so you yeah. might have to shoot it this summer for. Or it's 2022 for for the 2023 campaign, but sure. it gets this like uh, it looks great when it's green. It looks great mm -hmm. when it's dried. It's like a long lasting absolutely vibe. It changes. Yeah. yeah, totally. 
Well, before we go, I have to yeah. just give you a little shout out for being part of the Seattle Wholesale Growers Market Farm to Florist video yes, it series. Was so fun. I loved it. Thank, Thank you, you so much for saying yes to that. Yeah, it was great. I think, I mean, last year was so hard, you know, and that was definitely a highlight. I mean, you know how much I love Dahlia, so getting out to the field was amazing. Oh my gosh. So we'll share that video. Um, uh, Elena Earhart is the videographer. She did a fabulous amazing. job filming both at Dance Dahlia's, mm -hmm. which is in, uh, just sort of southwest of Olympia. It's probably about two hours outside of Seattle. Fields and fields of dahlias. Mm -hmm. And Carly did this, talk about color, that was a pretty <laughs> yeah. like raspberry vibe with a lot of accents, uh, compote. But it was probably the worst air quality day of oh, 2021. Yeah. It was, it was so smoky, I forgot about From that. the fires. Yeah. I think I wore two masks just to, I mean, forget COVID, we were just trying to protect our lungs right. from the smoke. Totally, yeah. So, what yeah, <laughs> the things we go through for beauty. Anyway, it was it's really fun, and I for people who haven't seen it, I'll I'll tag it onto this yeah, so they please. can watch. It's great, and yeah. all of the other floors. I I mean, I like anxiously waited every month for it to be posted. I loved watching everybody. There's one. There's two more coming out. Okay. Because of COVID, we had yeah. to postpone. Uh, like the tulip daffodil video okay. and the anemone ranunculus. So that that's makes sense. Up. Okay, great. Yeah. I was like, I think I missed some. But yeah, yeah, no, no, there's they one more. So fun. Uh, well, thank you for sharing this. Thanks, it Jennifer. was kind of the most wacky, <laughs> like last minute spontaneous yeah. thing. And Carly said yes. <laughs> and uh, Love it. it's great to update people and to have some news. Yeah. So you heard yeah. it here first. I know you did. Sorry. <laughs> anyone that's going to be upset that I didn't tell them. <laughs> well, let's see. That's, you know, we'll we'll slowly promote it. We will yeah. we will support you when that happens. And um, yes. have a great holiday. You too. Thanks. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> it was. <laughs>